Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install MASM, which is the Microsoft Macro Assembler. And in order to do so, we need to install Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. So to get started, let's go ahead and open up your web browser to my website, thegpu.com. And we'll come over to Menu and select Assembly Tutorials. Select the second option here, Assemble Installing MASM. Go and click on that. So throughout my assembly language tutorial series, I will be demonstrating code for two common assemblers, uh, MASM and NASM. Now MASM is the Microsoft macro assembler and is designed specifically for Microsoft Windows operating systems. Now NASM is the NetWide assembler and it is perfect for Linux based operating systems. In this tutorial, I will show you how to install MASM. So let's talk about the Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. There's basically, it's like the freebie there. So MASM is a component of the Microsoft Visual Studio tool set, so we'll need to download and install it. I'm going to show you the installation of the Community Edition, which is their freebie version. So let's head over to their website and start the download. Okay, and they're constantly changing this. I didn't put like a direct link to it there, but basically if we come over to the Visual Studio IDE, we've got download for Windows, pops open this little Community 2017 Edition. Let's go ahead and click on that. Uh, we don't want to take the survey, but let's go ahead and save the file. All right, pop open our downloads folder, and let's go ahead and begin running that. All right, it popped open into another window here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to kind of... Um, and we'll just leave that in the background there. All right, let's go ahead and do continue there. And I'm running a gigabit network um, here at uh, here, and so my mine might be a little bit faster than than what you experienced there. Okay, um, so it's basically like uh, individual components, workloads. We're gonna check this uh, desktop development with C++ because that's where it's gonna come in on that. So um, this. Uh, the rest of the stuff, you know, if you want to add like .NET for, you know, building other stuff, you go for it there. But uh, this is all we really need there. Uh, ASP.NET Web Development, that's pretty good. I mean, I use I use that basically for my my website there. Everything's in ASP.NET. Um, there's some other interesting stuff here, but primarily today, this is all we're really interested in there. And let's go ahead and select install. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then I'll bring it back up if there's anything interesting that needs needs noting there. Okay, so the initial installation is complete. We do have to sign in. Um, basically, if you don't have an account, you can create one really fast here. It's free. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Okay, so after I put in my logged into my account there, um, it just started this right up right there. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. The installer is still sitting behind here, so I'm going to close out of that. And let's just go ahead and uh, minimize that, and I'm going to bring this back up here. Okay, uh, we'll just close out of this getting started stuff here. So the first thing we want to do is just go up to File and New, and we're going to select Project here. And Visual C++. Uh, we're going to go with a um, basically just a empty project, okay? And underneath, and we'll, we'll, I'm going to create a new folder here on my root called uh, assembly there, okay? And this project we're just going to call this welcome. Create directory solution, so on and so forth. There um, looks good. Okay, um, so the Solution Explorer, I'm just going to move that over here on this side and kind of peg that up there. Maybe we'll yeah, just leave it over there. That's good enough. All right, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right-click here on Welcome and select Build Dependency, Build Customizations. And we are going to check the, the MASM right here, okay? Next thing we're going to do is right-click on this and go down to Properties. 
And underneath the, the linker underneath here, we're going to go to uh, System, and we're looking for the subsystem. Click in the white space over here. We're going to select Console, right? And then under Advanced, our entry point, we're going to go ahead and select Start here, okay? And we'll just do Apply OK on that. Now over on source files, we're just gonna select add new item and it'll default to C++ uh, file there and that's fine, we're gonna leave that there. Uh, we're just gonna call this welcome.asm. Change the, you wanna make sure you do the ASM extension there, that'll flag um, Visual Studio that we actually, this is an assembly file instead of a C++ file. Okay, and now we have that up there. All right, so, um, Now what did I do? Whoops. Solution Explorer. Pull that thing off and resize that now. That'll teach me to screw around with this during the video. Anyway, whatever. Um, go back here to the Welcome ASM. All right. Um, the first thing I want to do here is... Come over to my website now, and let's scroll down here to the source code here, and we will be able to just cut and paste this here, right? Um, so let's just come over here and paste that right in there. And we're just gonna go ahead and select the, the little run option right here. And before we do that, I'm gonna put a breakpoint here by clicking to the left of this, which will put this little red dot. And that'll put a breakpoint right before the exit process here, okay? And let's go ahead and run that. And that brings up in a console here, welcome to assembly language. All right, then we'll pop back over here to the Visual Studio here and we will just continue, which will move on and break us out of the process there. So um, just talking just a little bit I'll talk a few things about this here. So this exit process is part of the, the uh, Windows API call. So is the get, uh, get standard handle um, and the right console. So uh, the yeah, we have the data section, which is similar to the, the NASM there. Um, code section, it would be like the text uh, section under NASM there. Uh, you can de declare a variable, uh, a constant, essentially the same exact way there. Uh, the length is is identical to NASM there. Uh, output handle there. Um, normally th these would be in a .bss uh, section over in NASM there, but they're declared in the data section here. Uh, basically what this line does, well, here's our start, right? And you remember when we set up the properties there and told it where our entry point was, that's the start. And then so it's a procedure and this is the end of the procedure and that ends everything there. Um, we invoke the get standard handle, negative 11 basically is to the, the, the console there. And um, I've, got, I've got some documentation or links to some documentation for the Microsoft here on my, on my website there on that. So um, the, oh, well, I just popped into the wrong thing there. That's okay. And so when, when this particular API call or function is, is, is executed there, uh, invoked per se, uh, the handle is actually stored in the EAX register and then we move that over into this output handle uh, variable basically. And then in the EX register, we move the welcome message. <laughs> The EDX register, we move the length of the welcome message, and then we invoke the right console method here, which is part of the Windows API calls. Um, passing the output handle, the ECX value, which holds the actual message there, the length, and then written is just basically a variable which will tell us how many bytes are actually written to the console. Okay, and then this invokes the exit, and then we're done with that. So that's basically how that works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and. Just leave you guys with some final thoughts. So programming assembly using MASM requires the use of a lot of Windows API function calls. 
Now that adds layers of abstraction, which is uh, not the ideal scenario for the code optimization that developers are looking for. Now we basically end up with a lot of bloat, and that is the reason why you don't see many IoT devices running Windows. You know, my assembly language tutorial series is going to have a primary focus on optimizing code for IoT devices of the present and the future. So the vast majority of IoT devices run Linux-based operating systems, so NASM will get most of the attention. Now, with that being said, uh, understanding how to code assembly using NASM will provide you with a very deep understanding of how Windows operates. So it is, it is well worth the effort, actually. And, you know, if you're doing um, like some, some things like, for example, math functions or like algorithms, you know, especially like crypto stuff like that, you know, you can optimize in Windows here too as well. So um, anyway, uh, here's, um, here's the URLs of those of the uh, get standard handle, the right console, and the, uh, the exit process there if you wanted to take a look at some of that documentation there. Anyway, uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.